All right, so this tutorial, we're just going to detect two 3D objects colliding. What I have here is a finished version. This is what we're going to do, what we're going to see by the time we finish. I have two cubes. One cube is going to move, and when it touches the other one, it will stop moving. So I press play. And it stops moving. And over here in the console window, I had it output something when it stops moving. All right, so how do we do that? We're going to start over with a new scene. Okay. And first thing I added in there was a plane, flat plane there. Okay. Then I added in two cubes. Um, one cube. You know what I forgot to do? Let me reset the position of the plane to zero, zero, zero. And let me reset the position of the cube again that I just put in to zero, zero, zero. And uh, if I double click on any object, it'll focus in on that object. Let me zoom out a little in there. And then zooming out, in and out, I just scroll the mouse wheel. And then let me make sure the camera is looking at this angle. So I select the camera and then I say game object align with you. Bam. Right, so I said I was going to put two cubes. This is the first one. So I'll name this one cube one. And then I'm going to put a second cube in there. Go to the scene. Right click game object. The object cube. And it puts it there. It's kind of like right on top of my first cube. So I'm going to move this one back a little. This is going to be cube. Click on this here. So I like change the name cube two. So cube one. I also will take this and I'll just move it down this way. And then here's something you could do. You could select multiple objects. And I'll move them both up over the ground so you can see them. So, when I actually put these objects in here, cube one, um, it comes with this thing called a box collider. And if I click on the edit the collider button, you can kind of see it in green, what the box collider is, and it's shaped just to the shape of the cube. And also cube two, when I put cube two in there, it also had a box collider added with it automatically. I need the box, the collider object on cube one and cube two. That is how Unity knows. That's what it actually checks for when two, two objects collide. You have to have a collider object. And um, the other thing I need, one of the objects, one of these two cubes is going to need a rigid body from physics to help detect a collision. So I'm going to add it to my moving object as cube one. I'm going to make cube one move into cube two. So I select cube one, add component, and I go to the physics section and I select rigid body. And now in my cube, I have the property of a rigid body. And there's a thing called use gravity. I'm going to uncheck it. Okay. And um, all right. So now I have, I think, everything I need to detect a collision. I have two objects with colliders, and one of the objects has a rigid body. Now I'm going to add a script. I need to add some code. So I'll just call it my script again for you guys. And I'm adding the script to cube one. All right. I'm going to open the script up in Visual Studio by double clicking on the script. And here it is, my script. All right, this is just me. I like to set this up like this. And I like to take out these comments. Then I like to specify that these are private. I mean, they are, it's just that you don't have to put the word private, but I like putting it there. All right, so one thing we're gonna have to have is for this cube, it's going to move on the z-axis. We want to make it move by itself without any controls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a I'm going to give it a public variable, a float, and I'm going to call it move speed. And uh, 
by default I'm going to say it equals 1. And then, like I said before in another tutorial, when you add a public variable to your script, that variable will show up in the script section like it's coming up. Like so, move speed 1. So this way I could just set the move speed here if I wanted to to 2. And then what's going to happen is 2, two will be the move speed for, for the cube 1, even though over here it has a 1. It had a 1 by default before I set a value. But after I set a value in the inspector, that becomes the value for it. This will just have a value if nobody typed a value. That's a default. All right, so for move speeds 1, then on the update function, I'm just going to um, translate the position of it automatically. So I will say the cube, this cube's transform, um, translate to move position, translate new vector 3. <laughs> Go a little slower, you can see that I'm going to use this one, quote XYZ, like I did before. So in the X position, I'm not going to move at all. In the Y position, I'm not going to move at all. And in the Z position, I'm going to move move speed. And then I just multiply by time dot delta time. Okay, I can click on that. I multiply by time dot delta time, so um, it's a constant speed, no matter how fast or slow your computer runs. So now with this here, the cube should just move forward. It should move forward. So make sure I save. You see I have that little star there, so I'm going to do a save all. Now I go back over here, and I'm going to try pressing play. <clears throat> so it plays and the cube moved the wrong way. Well, that's because here's the axes, and the blue arrow is um, positive, and the other opposite end of the blue arrow is negative. So when I was telling it to move at move speed, it moved positive and moved in the direction of the arrow. If I wanted to go the backwards from the arrow, I have to do the minus. So I'll just say minus move speed save and play and it switches to the game window from the scene window and it moves okay oh wait let me say and it moves and it stops right there and it looks like it keeps trying to move but it's it stops right there when it moves it hits it okay so why did that happen because I had all these, I had both cubes have um, colliders on them, and my cube has a rigid body on it, which means it actually becomes like, I'm giving it physics, I'm giving it like an actual physical body in the scene. And when this, the text that it touches this cube's collider, it can't go through it. It stops. If I took off the, um, the rigid body, let's see. It'll go right through the object. So here I'm just going to remove the rigid body for a moment. Actually, I erased it. Let me save it. Um, okay, I'm not going to save the scene. Um, press play. Now there's two colliders, but there's no rigid body. So it just goes through the other cube. Okay. And let me just do something so you can tell that the other cube, one cube is skinnier than the other one. So you can tell that they didn't switch places, but one cube went through the other. Make this one 0.8. This one's smaller. And press play. And the cubes move, and it goes through the other one. So if I want them to actually I want them to actually hit each other and not go through. I just have to add that rigid body again. Boom. And I'm going to turn off gravity. And now I press play. And it hits, it can't go through. 
So if you notice it's jiggling a little bit, it keeps trying to go through, but it can't. It keeps trying to go through, but it can't. So how do I know when it hit in my code? There is an event called on collision enter. So on so most of the events, if you want to know what they are, you could use IntelliSense. You see, I type in on, and then I have all these different events here. And I could look for on collision enter. When it's going to enter, that's like when it first hits the um, text the collision thing. It's inside a collision event. Uh, they're touching each other. So when these two things touch, what can I do? I could say move speed equals negative move, move speed. How about that? What's that going to do if I say move speed equals negative move speed? That just means it's basically going to go the other way, right? Because if um, it's going to go the other way. Let me save it, and let's see that happen. Press play. It gets started up here it goes and then boom it goes the other way okay so the big thing about that on collision enter is it lets me do something when the collision happens i i can detect it in code and do something and what i did was i made it go the other way you can make it explode you know different things so there you go simple collision the end